الحمد للہ الحمد للہ نحمد ہو نستعین ہو نستق فر ہو ون امین بہی و نتوکل ولے ولا ادب اللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئات آمالنا من یحل اللہ فلا مذل اللہ و من یلل فلا حادی اللہ و نشہد و اللہ الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریق اللہ و نشہد ان سیدنا و سندنا و شفیعنا محمد عبده و رسول اما بعد Alhamdulillah, we are back uh, with you after one day's absence when we were just uh, extremely tired and we apologize for that. Inshallah, we will be catching up uh, in the last 10 days because there are a few surahs uh, that we will be leaving out, which is Surah Yusuf, Surah Kahf, uh, Surah Yasin, and we will be doing them separately because we will be doing the entirety of those surahs, uh, not selecting particular verses from them and inshallah those will be broadcast uh, in the last 10 days inshallah so today we are here uh, where I am it is the 14th fast of Ramadan and for some of you it is the 15th of Ramadan so we are slightly behind but inshallah we will catch up again because we will uh, dedicate more time inshallah in the last 10 days Today we are doing Juz 13, but we are not going to be doing uh, Surah Yusuf, just like we did not do it in Juz 12. So today basically we're going to be doing two surahs, Surah number 13, Ar-Ra'ad, also known as uh, the Thunder, and Surah 14, Ibrahim, about Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. And here now we have uh, for you on the slide the verses from both Surah 13, Surah Ra'ad, and Surah Ibrahim that Imam Ghazali Mulatada selected as jewels of the Qur'an. Again, those are those verses which he calls Al-Qismu Ilmi that help us have the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you also have the verses that Imam Ghazali Mulatada selected as pearls of the Qur'an. That is what he calls Al-Qismu Amali that helps us practice that knowledge and to live a life upon Surat al so now let us begin with Surah Ra'ad. If you remember, there was a series of six surahs uh, that we began. This is the third of those six surahs. It began with Surah Hud. Uh, sorry, this is the fourth of the six surahs. It began with Surah Yunus. And then it continued with Surah Hud. And then with Surah Yusuf, but which we did not do. Uh, so in that sense, it's the third that we're doing, but it's the fourth in the series. Surah number 13. Surah Ra'ad. Here again, uh, the six series, series of six surahs all begin with Alif Alam Ra. In one instance, as you saw, there's a meme. And then afterwards, Allah Ta'ala will, in, in the different surahs, He will describe the book in different ways. And that is also something that's very interesting, the different ways Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala described the Qur'an Kareem in the Qur'an. That itself would make a nice, interesting series uh, of verses to cover in some type of short tafsir course uh, this is also a Makki surah uh, some ulama view it's a Madani surah uh, some ulama have you know said that it's uncertain alright it's a relatively short surah and as you will see as we proceed now in Quran Akrim, the surahs are going to be much shorter uh, compared to the much longer surahs that we did many of the surahs from now onward will have about 50 to 60 ayat of Quran obviously with some exceptions <laughs> The major themes that are in this surah uh, is talking about the truth and veracity of Deen of Islam and especially trying to mention the truth and veracity of Quran Kareem and the Nabu of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Bitha or the resurrection and the life after death. So these are the three main three theological concepts of Deen. One is God, the divine being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is called Risala, prophethood and the messengerhood. Generally the concept of prophethood and messengerhood and specifically the finality and the belief in the last and final prophet and messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And third is resurrection after death, life, uh, the day of judgment and the hereafter. These are the three basic concepts of deen. And in that sense, uh, it does seem that it would make sense to view this surah as a Makkan surah and also uh, because of uh, its connection in terms of the Alif Lam Ra with the other surahs in this series of six which are Makkan surahs but perhaps it may be an early Madani surah a very very early 
Madin Sura, uh, when Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first migrated to Medina Manora, because in some sense, many of the community that had already accepted Islam in Medina Manora were still new, right? Because they had not lived in the Sohba, in the companionship of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Makkah Makarma, and so to establish perhaps the same concepts, the same core teachings of the Meccan revelations to reveal in the midst of the Muslimin and the community of Medina a similar themes and concepts, it's quite possible that Allah Ta'ala revealed some surahs which are very similar in theme and content to the Makkan surahs, but nonetheless they were revealed by Allah Ta'ala to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the early Medinan period. Now again, this is something that Western non-Muslim scholarship in Islam can't understand because they can't, because obviously they're from the outside, they're not from within the faith. So they can't understand things uh, from the perspective of a faithful believer. And they will just look at the literary features and themes and topics and classify it as a Makkan surah. All right? Uh, so notwithstanding its similarities, uh, it's quite possible that this was revealed early in Medina Manawara. All right, let us begin. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanu rajeem in bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif Lam Ra. Alif Lam Mim Ra. So this is also one of the surahs that has added uh, the letter Mim. Alif Lam Mim Ra. Tilka ayatul kitabi wal ladhi unzila ilayka min rabbika al-haqqu wa lakinna akthar al-nasi la yu'minun. The tilka ayat, that these are the verses of the revealed scripture, Al-Kitab. وَالَّذِهِ unzila ilayk And that which has been revealed to you, singular, Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مِن رَبِّكَ From your Rabb, al haqqu It is the absolute truth. It is the absolute truth. So as you would remember in our series, we have been highlighting this notion that Al-Kitab is used in many ways. Al-Kitab is used in one sense for quran Karim itself. It's also used for the totality of the entire body of scriptural revelation. Hence it would include the Torah, the Injil, and the quran Karim, and also the Zabur of Dawud al-Islam, right? Uh, and so these are the verses of revelation. So the quran Karim is part of Kitab. In one sense, when you in- understand Kitab as the entire scriptural body of revelation. And whether the unzila ilayk, and specifically the recital of the kitab, Qur'an al-Kareem, has been revealed to the Prophet ﷺ from his Rabb, and it is al-haq, it is absolute truth. Well, but now another thing about the book, However, the vast majority of people will not believe. The vast majority of people will not believe. And so this is going to be true at the moment and the period of the seerah of revelation, and it's going to be through throughout human history. All right? Uh, and may Allah Ta'ala, uh, you know, and Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala has explained in other verses of Quran, and we've done them, uh, some of them, why this is the wish of Allah Ta'ala, that all humanity does not believe, does not obey. Okay, verses 2 to 3. So this is from that series of uh, Allahu Ladi, sometimes it's Hu Ladi. So he, as rather actually here, it's Allah Ta'ala, rather than he, I should have written. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is the being who, is the one who. Now where do we get the word one from? Because Allah Di is singular, right? As opposed to Allah Dina, which is plural. So Allah Ta'ala is the one who. رَفَعَ السَّمَوَاتِ بِغَيْرِ أَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا So he has raised the Samawat. And here now, Samawat, I would not want to translate as heavens, but rather what it means is the skies, the atmosphere. Right? بَغَيْرِ amadin تَرَوْنَهَا Without any pillars that you can see. Without any pillars that you can see. Now there was a time when earlier, maybe, you know, an earlier science or earlier human understanding that some of the believers uh, took this verse to literally mean that they are pillars, but we can't see them. All right? Uh, second understanding is that there's no pillars in the sense of steel columns, but there's a certain force, Right? 
uh, and I can't claim to know that level of science about geology, but there's a certain force, whether you want to call it, that keeps the atmosphere, and you know, from a, from a little I'm remembering now from high school science, there's levels of the atmosphere, right? Stratosphere, this sphere, that sphere, and they're all maintained around the Earth, and this is one of the reasons why the conditions of life obtain on Earth, as opposed to the atmospheric conditions on Venus, and it may partly have to do with the rotation of the Earth on its axis, uh, primarily and gravity, why this atmosphere doesn't fall apart, right? Uh, and so this phenomenon is how Allah Ta'ala has raised the atmosphere and kept this atmosphere intact, uh, kept the ozone layer intact, if you will. So it's not with any pillars that we can see, but it's certain forces that maintain the structure of land on earth and then air gap between us and then levels of the atmosphere and then outer space. So that is something that one can understand structurally, scientifically. But yes, uh, uh, it's, it's, they're not pillars that we can see. So without pillars that you can see. Uh, in other words, I'm loosely translating this by means which you cannot see. So I've explained this earlier in the series, so I won't repeat it again. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then directed his attention towards his creation from the vantage point known as Al-Arsh. And because that vantage point represents his might and majesty, so Allah ta'ala chose to use a word which is sometimes translated as throne to denote and represent that vantage point. Next. وَسَّخَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ كُلَّ يَجْرِي لِأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed uh, the moon, the sun and moon. Sakhara means he made them subservient. He subjugated the sun and moon. Each and every one of them is coursing in its orbit, uh, right? Traveling in its orbit. لِأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى For an appointed term. Okay, so that is just the mathematical calculator, regular orbits of the sun and the moon. Yudabbiru al-amra. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing tadbir. He, Allah ta'ala, is directing and managing and overseeing and planning the affair. And al-amr is, the alif lam here is istighraq. It means every single aspect of the affairs of the universe. Yufassilu al-ayati. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expounding and elaborating upon the verses of his revelations. Or you can say Allah ta'ala is elaborating upon his signs in the, that he's mentioned in, in his created universe. لَأَلَّكُمْ بِلِقَاءِ رَبِّكُمْ تُوْكِنُونَ So that maybe you will have yaqeen, absolute certainty regarding the meeting with your Rabb. And we talked about this early in the series as well. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in this series of six surahs used this phrase often about meeting the Rabb. And so that encompasses everything. It encompasses the belief in the divine being on the day of judgment, human humans being judged, etc., etc., and so that we have yaqeen. So this is something for us to reflect upon, that not just uh, it's not just iman that we can attain through reflection on the natural creation, but indeed it is yaqeen, absolute certainty in our iman, that we can, inshallah, attain by reflection on the natural creation. Wahuwaladhi, and he is the one being who... Maddal Arda, and he has spread out the earth. Wajala fiha Rawasiya, and he has placed therein Rawasiya means firm mountains. On Haran and streams and rivers, Wamin Kulithamarat, and every and all kinds of fruit. Jaala fiha Zojanith Naini, and he has placed therein sp- spouses, mates, pairs, two of a kind. Yugshi Layla Nahara, and then the night comes and it envelops the day. The night comes and envelops the day, enshrouds the day. So, this is a metaphor, right? And again, we explain this when you see from Maghrib to Isha, when the first thread of black comes, and then the darkness keeps spreading across the sky, such that the black darkness of the sky enshrouds the clarity or brightness of the sky in the fidalika and indeed in all of this la ayatin are signs many signs yatafakkurun for such a people who would reflect and ponder upon those signs and make it a means for them to attain yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay now this notion of uh, 
This can refer to many aspects. Yes, this can refer to male, female. It can refer to bitter and sweet. It can refer to positive ion and negative ion. It can refer to matter and dark matter. It can refer to everything, right? Uh, now, if you view it as just applying to the thamarat, then you'll have to come up with some, and I don't know enough about the science of fruits, but you, I'm sure a person who knows that would be able to explain this, how there are aspects in which fruits are also been scientifically paired. But if you use it for all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, then you will see there's so many aspects, right? Certainly human, animal, animate lifestyle, life uh, creation, almost everything is male, female. And I give you other examples for other aspects of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's physical creation. Then Allah Ta'ala is going to mention his signs on the earth, which means in the land on planet earth. All right? On planet earth. Uh, so I, let me just translate this quickly. This is just a mention of the signs. So upon the earth uh, and in the land of earth, kit'un mutajawiratun. So they are, kit'un means pieces, tracts, swaths of land. Mutajawirat, that are neighboring one another. And so that's, you know, if you ever fly and you look out the window, you will see this. Right? With Jannatum min Atnabu and you will find groves, literally it's gardens, but Atnab is grapes, so you will find uh, gardens and groves of grapes. With Zarun and you will find fields which have agricultural crops and grains that people are tilling, sowing and harvesting. Wanakilun uh when Nakhilun is a plural of Nakhl, which is the date palm. So Nakhilun means date palms, many, 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 many date palm trees, sinwanun, sinwanun wa gheru sinwan. Now this is a little bit hard. Sinwan here means you can say of a shared, shared lineage, uh, whatever the term would be. Again, I don't know enough about plants either. <laughs> I'm a city person. I don't know these things. But sinwan, uh, basically of a shared root, shared source, shared lineage, uh, or of a non-shared root in lineage. Yuska uh, bima'in wahidin, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is watering, the, uh, these date palm trees are watered by Allah ta'ala with a single water, with a single water. So uh, what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means by this is that there's one land and even there's one water, right? But so many, such diversity comes uh, from even one soil and one water. So the major ingredients that we can see, humans can see, is the soil and water. But a diverse array of vegetation and crops can come. All right. وَنَفَصِّلُوا بَعْضَهَا عَلَى بَعْضِ and then, when the fadlu ba'daha ala ba'd, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, and we, Allah ta'ala, in our might and majesty and knowledge, have favored some above others uh, in terms of fadl, in terms of bounty and increase. Fil akli, fil ak, fil akuli, in terms of, uh, you can say, in terms of consumption, in terms of. Uh, in terms of produce, in terms of product, uh, in terms of... So Allah Ta'ala has made some date palm trees have more fruit, some have less fruit. Uh, Allah Ta'ala has elevated some beyond the other. And this is an example especially for the Arabs because the Arabs were familiar with this. And when you go to Medina Munawra, inshallah, and you go to the date market, you will see there's so many types of dates, so many variety of dates, different date sellers have different quality of dates. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in terms of uh, the produce or the product or the fruition uh, that appears on these uh, multiple date palm trees. Again, this is a sign from Allah Ta'ala, right? It's one earth and it's all one water. But so many different types of dates come on so many different types of date palm trees. So this is a sign of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Indeed, in that uh, is uh, many, many signs for a community who has sense, who has akal who can use their reason and to understand uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his signs on earth. Okay. Now, uh, the very important uh, aspect of this verse I've highlighted for you in the title scripture. But let me first translate. 
وَيَسْتَعْجِلُونَكَ So again, ka is singular for Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would hasten you. They mean the disbelievers. They would hasten you. بِسَيَّعْتِ قَبْلَ الْحَسَنَةِ So literally it means they would have you hasten evil before the good. They would have you hasten evil before the good. بِسَيَّعْتِ قَبْلَ الْحَسَنَةِ وَكَدْ خَلَثْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ قَبْلِهِمُ الْمَثُلَاتُ However, uh, so they want to hasten evil upon the good even though many amthal, mathulat is also plural of mathal, uh, plural of examples. So even though many, many examples, khalat, mean, khalat means has passed before them, right? So even though, uh, sorry, I have to turn the screen properly. وَقَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهُمُ الْمَثُلَاتِ And then many examples have passed before them. So in other words, all these communities, all these civilizations, all of those who were punished has passed before them. But still, the disbelievers ask, uh, they ask Nabi Akareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and, and you've seen this in, early in the series, that when will the punishment come? If you say there's a punishment, when will it come? So they're trying to hasten. They're trying to make you hasten, right? The evil. Even though the examples of many who have come before have already passed in front of them. وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَذُو مَغْفِرَةٍ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى ذُلْمِهِمْ Allahu Akbar Kabira. And indeed, your and indeed, truly, your Rabb Nabi Akram Sallallahu is the possessor of absolute and entire forgiveness. Linas for all people, Allah Dulmihim, despite their wrongdoing, even when they're upon their wrongdoing, because the Maghfira is there precisely for that Dhul. So this is an ajib uh, description of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and it's for all humanity. And then, obviously, then if there's a being like that who possesses all forgiveness for you, and still you don't turn to him, وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَشَدِيدُ ikab. But at the same time, indeed, truly, your Rabb is extremely severe, right? Is extremely severe in his punishment, in his ikab on the Day of Judgment, if a human being chooses to show up to Allah Ta'ala on that day, without having sought his forgiveness, and repented from shirk and disbelief. So this simply, you know, this is a, a tremendous, you can, well, it's a nice way to make dua sometimes. If you recite this, I will, I've also brought my dhul, my wrongdoing to you. And I'm not even just from linnas, I'm from al amanu. I'm from al-mu'mineen min al-nas. So Allah Ta'ala, surely if your maghfir is for all humanity, despite their wrongdoing, if they turn to you and seek that forgiveness, then I'm not just from all humanity, I'm from that segment of humanity that is from Ummat Mustafa وسلم, from the Allah Dina Amun, from the Ahl Iman. So surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your maghfir is also for me. I ask you, waqfirli, warhamni, watubu alayna, that you send your forgiveness on me, you send mercy on me, and you accept and you relent to me and accept my repentance. So you should mark these ayat and recite them and use them in du'a and when addressing and talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verse number 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a very particular aspect of his knowledge, which is a particular aspect of unseen. And even if today, scientifically, because of ultrasound, a lot of this may no longer be unseen, but still, there's still a huge domain which is unseen because the only thing that the ultrasound can unveil is the physical aspect of what is in the moons. But Allah SWT knows much, much more than just the gender or the physical aspect, right? Allah SWT knows every single thing about that person, their temperament, their character, their behavior, their destiny, their decree. Allah Ya'lamu ma ta'malu kullu untha. Allah SWT knows everything that is born by every female, right? Wama, uh, and this is not just for humans, it's in any and all female wombs. Wama taghidul arham. So arham, and it's also very relevant here to point out that arham is the word, is plural of rahm, is the word that Allah does use for the womb, and all of you will recognize it's also the same root that is used for rahma or mercy. So the mother is the womb of mercy. Allah has placed mercy in mothers and motherhood, and her very act of having a womb and, 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 and you know having a child or being pregnant and giving birth, all of that is incredible mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So mothers are physical embodiments because rahm is physical. They're literally physical embodiments, emblems, symbols of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
So, arham. So that is, uh, you can say, so taghid means to diminish or even to the extent of loss, right? Uh, so it can be understood in one way that what the womb loses in the sense that well, uh, wamat uh, dad. So what they diminish and what they increase. Uh, so one meaning of this can be uh, the wombs itself physically. Uh, and this is so different uh, periods of different stages of the pregnancy and gestation of the womb. Physically, there may be some contraction or expansion of the womb. Secondly, it can be uh, sometimes there's loss and there's miscarriage. Sometimes there's uh, increase and there's twins or triplets or quadruplets. Uh, it can mean, so it can have many meanings. It can be physical physically referring to the womb, referring to physically that which is inside the womb, but it's a notion of contraction, expansion, diminishing, and increase. And indeed, every single thing, uh, and you can take this every single thing, absolutely, or in every single thing pertaining to the womb and that which is in the womb, uh, in the regard of Allah Ta'ala, بِمِقْدَار, is with a apportioned amount, Right? is with an apportion amount is measured uh, in, a, in an amount known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in absolute proportion. And this is an aspect of his creation, right? That it's not random, it's not arbitrary, it's miqdar. It's with a proper proportion and amount. Verses 9 to 10, Alimul was shahada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the being who knows the unseen was shahada and he knows that which is witnessed. If you have any problem with sound, you should email so when I hold the screen this way, I can see the Arabic properly. But the mic is also on the screen. And if I try to put the mic closer to my mouth, I can't see the screen properly. And that causes difficulty in reading the Arabic. So today I'm going to do it this way. I hope, inshallah, you can hear. Alam al ghaybi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that being. So it's referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knower. Uh, and even when Allah ta'ala says the word alim, it means alim. It means knowing according to his ilm. al ghaybi all that which is unseen, again we will take the Alif Lami for istighraq, was shahadatin, all that is witnessed that can be seen. Alright? Al Kabirul Muta'al. So Al Kabir, so this is the second attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First is Al Mal Ghibi wa Shahada, second is Al Kabir. He is the great. Hmm? And you know, so when, when we talk about Akbar, Al Akbar, that's denoting that Allah Ta'ala is greater than all else. And that is his superlative greatness. Al-Kabir is Allah Ta'ala's own intrinsic greatness. And in some ways, if now I want you to sort of feel this word. Al-Kabir means that Allah Ta'ala's greatness, his own greatness is so great, you don't even need to compare it. It's incomparable. Yes, were you to compare it, he's Akbar to everything. But he himself is Al-Kabir. Al-Muta'al. Al-Muta'al. That Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is exalted. Like his Al-Ali Al-Muta'al. The being, in some sense you could even call this in English, the self-exalted. The being who is exalted to the extent that he has exalted himself. Allahu Akbar Kabira. Subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanal adheem. Alhamdulillah al-kabir al-muta'al. Subha'u minkum man asalla al-qawla wa man jahara bihi. And it is equal from all of you whom hides and conceals their statement وَمَنْ جَهَرَ بِهِ or whosoever proclaims it and discloses it and reveals it وَمَنْ هُوَ مُسْتَخْفٍ بِاللَّيْلِ and that person so مُسْتَخْفٍ بِاللَّيْلِ is at the night you're seeking uh, خُفْيَة so you're doing istighfaf you're trying to surreptitiously that person who surreptitiously uh, roams in the night وَسَارِبٌ مِنْ نَهَارِ or that person who openly goes forth by day it's just all sawa and it's all equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because he is alim al ghaybi wa shahada. He knows that all that is unseen and he knows everything that is concealed. Everything that is unseen and he knows everything that is concealed. Sorry. He knows everything that is unseen and everything that is revealed. 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 Verse 11 is a jeeb verse. And it's, I, I can still remember the first time I learned this because this was, you know, there's gems in the Quran in that sense. Things that people, you know, ordinary people like you and me, we don't know, right? We would never have known until we read it in the Quran, right? And this is the fact that there are angels who guard every human being. Every human being. So let me explain now. Lahu, 
to him. Now, there's not a particular him being referred to here. Some translators have made that mistake. Luhu means to anyone, to everyone, to any and everyone, whether they uh, conceal their speech, they reveal their speech, they surreptitiously, uh, they see- seek secrecy by surreptitiously roaming in the night, or they go forth openly in the day. What it's really is speaking to anyone and everyone. He has mu'akkibatun, mu'akkibat. Mu'akkibat, these are angels, okay? Angels who attend to that person, who guard that person, who follow that person. Min bayna yadehi wa min khalfihi. So when bayna yadehi means that they're to his front, wa min khalfihi and to their rear. So his, I mean his or her, just, just general, to, to their front and to their rear. What do they do? Yahfadunahu. Yahfadun is plural. All of those angels. It's not, it's not necessarily two. It's not that the one in front, one in rear. They're angels, plural. That's all we say. Yahfadunahu. They all guard that person. They preserve that person. They guard that person. Min amrillah. Out of and due to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right. Uh, now it's interesting that this is one of those verses also I told you. Let me do that second part, then we'll come back into the angels part, right? Well, here let me finish the angels part, then we'll come back to the uh, to this part. So this is one of those verses where there are two topics in one verse, two topics in one verse, and it's interesting to try to also discover. And inshallah, we'll do that. We'll try that today as well. The link between these two topics. All right. So what do these angels do? What do these angels do? Hmm? These are the. This is different by this is different from the Karam and Katibin. So the Karam and Katibin are one each on right shoulder, left shoulder. As all you know, writing good on the right shoulder writes the good deeds. One on the left shoulder records the bad deeds. These are multiple angels. Now this is so around. So mean you're not aware of this, right? I think me and you, we never are conscious of this. That I have one angel on my right shoulder, one angel on my left shoulder. I have angels in front of me, behind me, who are guarding me, who are guarding me. So first I want to discuss what this means exactly. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so first let's go back. The rub to this, Alimul ghaybi wa shahada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So these are ghayb, these are unseen, we don't know. All these angels, they are unseen, they are unseen. But Allah ta'ala knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Allah ta'ala is great, al-kabir, he is al-muta'al. He is the exalted high to the extent that he has exalted himself. But out of his mercy and love, and kindness he has sent these angels as are mu'akkibat as are mu'akkibat alright so for all human beings there are these angels so uh, Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned a hadith that has been narrated by Imam Al-Bukhari in his As-Sahih that they are two groups of angels who have been appointed to guard human beings who fulfilling this a duty that is being described in Surah Rat, Surah 13, verse 11. One angel comes and does it in the daytime for all the human beings. And there's another team that does it in the nighttime. And these two groups, Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam, also mentioned that they meet together during the prayers of Fajr and Asr. So the night team departs after Fajr Salah and the daytime team takes over then. And then the daytime team departs after Asr Salah and the nighttime team takes over then. So this, there's many interesting things here. Okay, One side interesting thing is that it shows a concept of Fajr and Asr actually being the true ends of the day. right? And why is that? Because you would think that night starts at Maghrib or Isha. So just think that Maghrib would correlate to sunrise. Sunset would correlate to sunrise. We call Tulubish jumps. So Fajr is one and a half hours before that. And Asr is around one and a half hours before that. And this hadith is also a, a, a proof that furthers Imam Abu Hanifa Rimantal's position that Asr is what around one and a half hours before Maghrib, Yani Mithlain. So for those of you who study Ilm, an interesting nukta here. All right, here. So interestingly, they meet with one another. This is why also great emphasis has been placed by the Awliyaullah Sufiya on Fajr and Asr. And I suspect that some of them, very few, may even have had some inkling of this gathering of these two teams of angels at Fajr and Asr, and they're changing the shift. Khair, all of this is there. Not the inkling part, that is just my estimation. Uh, this reality, however, is mentioned 
uh, in the Hadith in Imam Abu Dawud. All right. So what are they doing? What is the meaning of Yahfudun? So in another Hadith narrated by Imam, uh, narrated by Imam Abu Dawud in the Sunan, uh, Sayyidina Rasulullah said that they guard a person against physical harm. Physical harm. However, this is all with the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wish that a human being is harmed physically, as happens many times in this world, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes that command from those guardian angels. And so they don't guard that person from that physical harm which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to afflict that person. All right. Some of the ulama uh, were of the opinion, and they based this on different narrations and different statements of Sahaba Kiram, which I don't get into that because then it's a detailed discussion as to their authenticity. So let's just say some ulama based uh, had an opinion that it's not just that the angels guard from physical harm, because Allah Subhanahu has mentioned this word generally, yahfalun, so that they are guiding, they must be guarding from a spiritual harm as well. So maybe they try to keep that person away from sin. Maybe they try to guard that person from shaitan. Uh, Allah hu alam, Allah knows best. But this is a very major, major, uh, and, 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 and they've also added by the way, protecting a person from jin, evil jinnat who may will ish, uh, w- wish ill, Allah Akbar, who may wish ill on uh, that person. Uh, so there are many ways, many ways. Okay. So this is a great mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then this should also be something we keep in mind that if we do a sin, we actually do, every time we sin, we do so in the presence of many angelic beings. So one is the angel on our right shoulder, the second is the angel on our left shoulder, and then all these angels. And not only, okay, the angels on the right and left shoulder, they're just recording. They don't do anything for us. But these angels are our true guardian angels. So this English term, guardian angel, it's in Quran, all right? So how shameful is it that we would commit a sin, especially a shameless sin, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, uh, praised uh, angels in us, you know. And it's our security, you know, in modern contemporary Arabic, muakibat is used for like secret service security personnel, all right? Uh, so this is the sense that they're really there for our security. Okay, let's move because uh, we have to move obviously faster in this type of series. Um, the next part of this verse is a different topic. So let's first do that and let's try to explore the link between these two topics. In the la ma hatta ma And uh, indeed, truly, verily, Allah Subhanahu will not change ma all that is the condition of a community. All that is befalling a community, anything and everything that may be afflicting that community, any and all aspects of that community, Allah Subhanahu will not change what is in that community. Hatta yughayru ma anfusihim until and unless that community themselves changes and alters what is in themselves. Wa ila arad Allahu bikomin su'an fala marad lahu. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever wishes and desires that su on any evil should befall a qawm, a people, a community, fala marad lahu, then there is no repelling it. There is no returning it. Wa ma luhum min dunihi min wal, and that community has no wal is a wali, they have no protector min dunihi other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright. So the first aspect here is that we must we must change ourselves although the verse has been Allah subhanahu has mentioned the word qawm in the verse the ulama have taken a more general meaning as well as also for every individual it's for community society race ethnicity nation state whatever you want to call it family all levels from the individual to the highest level of collective which is the very ummah itself uh, so Allah subhanahu will bring about betterment in our condition only and until and unless when we bring about betterment in our own conditions as well. Second is when you map nafs and qawm. So one way is to say Allah will not bring about a change in the community until the community changes itself. Allah will not bring about a change in the family until the family changes of itself, etc. The second way is that every collective 
that qawm is constituent of individuals anfus so allah ta'ala will not bring about a change in any collective be that family society nation state ummah community until the individuals in that collectivity bring about a change in themselves and that is really the strongest meaning of this verse but then all of the meanings are also there all right so how what would this have to do with the angels what is this i mean you know uh what is the nisba or connection between these two topics all right a small little question also uh that may come here uh which is uh you know, why didn't Allah subhanahu ta'ala, which I, if you remember, I discussed this with you once, why did not Allah subhanahu ta'ala break the verse? So that is due to this ending, al. Okay, so verse 12 is going to end, uh, thikal. Verse 13 is going to end, mihal. All right, verse 14 is going to end, dalal. Verse 15 is going to end, asal. Get the idea? So the notion is to end these series of verses on al so for the purpose of rhyme, for the son of the mu'jiz of Qur'an al-Karim, that it blends theme and topic with sound, sound and rhyme, is also a miracle of the Qur'an al-Karim. So that is why the verse ends here. Otherwise, verse 11 could have ended here. Min uh, amrillahi. And then another, next verse could have started, Inna laha la yughayiru. Right? But then this verse 11 would have ended, not on al. It would have ended on min amrillahi. Okay? But beyond that, a further deeper, intricate masterpiece design of Allah Ta'ala in the structure of his kalam, kitabullah, is that there's a connection between these two also. It's not just for the rhyme. Again, Westerners will only look at the rhyme. Mu'mineen will know it's never just the sound. There's also going to be something in meaning. So there's something about this part which is deeply connected to the first part. Hmm? And so what happens here is that uh, if we don't change the condition in ourselves for the better we will lose the guardianship of these angels and if the qawm wants the guardianship of which angels the angels that descended in Badr and were there in Hunayn remember we did this earlier in the series then every individual must first change their conditions such that, as, such that they remain under the guardianship of their individual guardian angels then if every individual of the ummah does that and every individual of the ummah falls under the guardianship of their guardian angels then inshallah Allah Ta'ala will bring the entire ummah the qawm of muslimin under the guardianship of all those angels that guard the ummah Allahu Akbar Kabira. so we're still so this promise is still there this promise is still there. The Ummah can still have access to the angels that guard and defend and ally with us like we had in Badr and other places. If And every individual still has access to these angels. Access in the sense that every individual can still fall under the guardianship of these angels the more they make themselves righteous. And this, that is the second rupt between these two topics in this verse. That you, will, the more you change your inner nafs for the better the more you will fall under the hifaza of those angels. So if we take the true awliya who are the muttaqeen and sadiqeen of this ummah because they have worked on their nafs so much, then la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun can also mean that now they fall entirely under the guardianship of their own guardian angels. Verses 12 to 13, Allah is going to mention the examples of lightning and thunder. Lightning al-barq and thunder al-ra'ad, uh, uh, which is the name of this surah. Huwa alladhi yurikum al-barq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, Allah, is that being who makes you see, right? Who shows you, who displays for you lightning, al-barq. Khawfan wa tama'an. And when you see that lightning, number one, what you do is you feel fear. So rather, actually, this is the uh, tamiz. So the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows you and displays for your lightning so that he may inspire in you fear and he may inspire in you hope and, he, and also he is that being who Allah ta'ala is that being who has produced uh, 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 heavy clouds. Literally they're heavy clouds. It means they're laden with a lot of water. They're laden with a lot of water and often lightning and thunder, as I think some of us, even city folk, have witnessed, accompanies rain clouds. Accompanies the rain clouds. All right. 
وہ یہ سب بے ہر ہم دے ہی اینڈ دا تھنڈر از ڈوئنگ وٹ دا تھنڈر از ڈوئنگ تسبی اف اللہ سلام تعالیٰ اللہ اکبر سو نیکسٹ ٹائم وی ہیئر تھنڈر رائٹ دس دے کال تھنڈر کلیپ سم ٹائمز اور یو نو بھوم اف تھنڈر از ڈوئنگ دا تسبی اف اللہ وہ یہ سب بے ہر بے ہم دے ہی دا تسبی اینڈ دا ہم دا بلّہ سبان و تعالیٰ So at that time we should always try to remember to say Subhanallah wa bihamdi Subhanallah al-Azim or some other sentences so we also do Tasbih and hamd of Allah Ta'ala along with the Ar-Ra'ad along with the thunder Well Malaika too and the angels are also Well Malaika the angels also do Tasbih and hamd of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala Min khifatihi So the angels from the khawf of Allah Ta'ala from out of fear of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala Now whether the angels are doing it generally out of fear but it's also because of the lightning and thunder. So again, we should feel the feeling of fear, we should feel the feeling of hope, we should express the feeling of tasbih and express the feeling of hamd whenever we see lightning and whenever we hear or see the flashes of thunder or hear thunder. Wa yursilu as-sawa'ika. As-sawa'ik is now the bolts, right? You can call it thunderbolts or call it lightning bolts. Uh, so this is, when it's a lightning bolt, it's the jagged light of lightning. And when it's a thunderbolt, it's that flash. All right? For you see, بِهَا مَنْ And Allah Ta'ala makes them reach, uh, or you can say He strikes them uh, with that, but He yeah he strikes it or makes it reach whomsoever He wishes. وَهُمْ يُدَادِلُونَ فِي اللَّهِ And they are disputing with you. I mean, it is Allah Ta'ala. I mean, Allah Ta'ala saying, Allah Ta'ala, He is that being who does all this. And meanwhile, look at these disbelievers. And these disbelievers, يُجَادِلُونَ فِي اللَّهِ And they are disputing and arguing uh, concerning regarding Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala. وَهُوَ شَدِيدُ mihal, And Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala is shadid in His mihal. So mihal uh, means His strength. But mihal is a particular type of strength which is applied. Right? Uh, strength that is applied. So, who is Shadidul Mihal? He is extremely intense, extremely mighty, extremely Shadid in the strength that he applies, in the power that he applies in this world. Whether that power is applied through sending lightning and thunder, or whether that power will be applied to sending his anger and wrath on those who argue and dispute regarding him. 14. La da'watul haqqi. Uh, sorry, Lahu da'watul haqqi uh, to Allah Ta'ala alone is the true da'wa. So da'wa here is supplication. So as I mentioned in the scripture, du'a is true only when made to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Du'a is true only when made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, by the way, the hope, uh, the hope over here, uh, it's not that we see lightning and thunder, you're getting hope of Allah Ta'ala's mercy for your sins. You get hope about the heavy laden clouds that they're going to bring rain. So rain is something especially for the desert Arab, but generally also rain is always a uh, need of human beings. But also rain has been understood in hadith to also symbolize the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever we see lightning and thunder bringing rain clouds, because we hope for the rain, we also then hope for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah ta'ala has created this natural creation symbolic of both His might and His power and the ability to punish whom so he wills through lightning bolts, but also that his might and power is accompanied with mercy. So might and power is lightning and, th- repre- you know, s- lightning and thunder are symbolic manifestations of his might and power, and the rain is symbolic manifestation of his mercy. Luhu da'watul haqqi And to Allah Ta'ala, and to Allah Ta'ala alone, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone, is the true du'a, is the true prayer, is the true supplication. He's the only one, so he's the only one we worship, do ibadah, and he alone is the one who is worthy of du'a and of being called upon. وَالَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ And all of those who call upon مِن دُونِهِ Any apart from Allah Ta'ala, any being apart from Allah Ta'ala, false God, لَا يَسْتَجِيبُونَ لَهُمْ بِشَيْءٍ They will not be you know, they will not be replied in the slightest. They will not be replied in the slightest. They reply, those who, those who are being falsely called upon will not reply them in the slightest in any way whatsoever. 
And so the example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give, illa is accept, but Allah is going to give a, a coin another example. Kaba siti kafehi, like the one who stretches out their hands or their palms, il al ma'i towards water, liyablugha fahu, so that the water may reach their mouth. Wama huwa bibalahihi, but the water does not reach it. But the water does not reach it. Wama dua ul kafirina illa fi dalal, and not are the prayers and supplications of the disbelievers illa fi dalal, except in manifest error. Except in manifest error, except that they will lead them astray. It also means except that they're futile, right? So this is a person, again a metaphor that was strong for the desert Arabs, the image of a person who is thirsty or in drought and is reaching out to a water, but he can't reach it, maybe because of some mirage, right? Uh, so their, their du'as to their false deities are just like that. Verse 15 is an eye of sajda, so I will not recite it in Arabic, uh, otherwise then sajda will become wajib on all of the listeners, whether to listen live or listen later. And sometimes some people may neglect making that sajda or be forgetful. And we don't want to put that burden on anyone and take that responsibility on ourselves. So we will just translate this in English. And to Allah Ta'ala does sajda every single thing that is in the samawat and the earth. Every single thing. Every single animate life. So ma means all, in, all objects, animate or inanimate. And man specifically means animate life. All right? All beings, all creatures, all sentient life forms in the Samawat and the earth, in the skies, the transcendent realms and the heavens and all that are on earth. Whether they make that sajda to him, taw'an, whether they make that sajda to him willingly or they make that sajda to him karhan or they make that sajda to him unwillingly, all of them will make sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the first aspect, first aspect, right? What does that mean? Uh, first, it means that everything will subjugate to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether they wish or not. So even disbelievers, they may not, disbelievers are doing sujood to Allah ta'ala. They don't prostrate to Him and worship. But they're absolutely subservient, subservient and subjugated to His command and His power, whether they like it or not. Okay? That is one meaning of it. That is one meaning of it. Uh, a second meaning is that... Uh, The second meaning is that taw'an means when we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of our own love and true sincerity. And karhan refers to some ways that human beings, like Allah ta'ala mentioned earlier in Quran, we've seen that they call and make dua to Allah ta'ala when they're in the stor- storm, but then when Allah ta'ala removes the storm from them, they forget him. Uh, so it's referring to that also. <laughs> With ilaluhum <coughs> bil ghuduwi wal asal. And their shadows, uh, their shadows of all of all creatures, man, their shadows do sajda to Allah Ta'ala, bil ghudubi wal asal. So ghudubi means the mornings, and asal means the evenings. Or again, if you want to take it from Asr to Maghrib time, it would mean the early evenings or late afternoons. So what does this mean? The shadows do sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the sense that, you know, that, are sajda uh, uh, so your shadow is prostrate or lying on the ground right uh, and you can imagine that it's doing sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, some of you may not know this but it's a feature of uh, astronomy that every single day and every single point in the world every single latitude and longitude there is a time there is a time when in fact, there are two times. There's a time when your for, f- your forward shadow is pointed towards Kaaba, pointed towards Makkah Mukarma, and there's a time when your back shadow is pointed towards Makkah Mukarma. This used to be one way, actually, that traditionally people used to find the Qibla of Masajid. They would calculate astronomically that time for the latitude and longitude that they were at, and then they would know at that time... Uh, the shadow of every object is pointed to, pointing towards Makkah Mukarama, and you just take any object and you look at its shadow and you get the direction of the Qibla and you construct the masjid in that way. 
then once a year in the northern hemisphere and then once a year also in the southern hemisphere there's a particular day and time uh, in which the shadow and shade of everything in the world at that time simultaneously are all pointing towards Gaba all right uh, this is a math- mathematical scientific astronomical fact I also tell you, uh, just so we don't, this is true for any point in the world. And in other words, there's a time in the day when your shadow is pointing towards New York. There's a time in the day, there's one time in the year when everything in the northern hemisphere shadow points towards New York. There, right? So for uh, this, the nature of being on a globe, this is part of our global existence. Okay? But obviously we will take it scientifically as uh, Allah Ta'ala has made this so that the shadow and shade of everything, at least once a day, uh, in a sense prostrates itself towards Makkah Makarma, but that is a scientific understanding and I also tell you scientific understandings never can completely always understand the shan the majesty of Quran the Kareem transcends science as it transcends any and all forms of human understanding rationality philosophy science so even if I ever use a scientific explanation it's just giving you a drop of the understanding the reality is far greater than this uh, and that is that the shades and shadows of everything do sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the mornings and in the evenings. Verse 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, generally I've just given this general heading that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to mention the falsehood of shirk. Uh, and then we're going to have an, another example where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to show how he, uh, you know, distinguishes the truth from falsehood. Qul, proclaim to them Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man, man rabbu samawat wal ard. That who is the rub of the samawat of the skies and the heavens and the transcendent realms will ard in this land? Kulillah. Proclaim to them, give the answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah alone. Hmm? Allah alone. And so this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately answering the question for the mushrikun. In other words, it's a style of kalam. It's a style of khitab. It's a rhetorical style of speech that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has adopted. And when Allah says Kulillah it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah alone. Alright. Uh, then Kul proclaim to them Nabi Kareem Sundu Nasam Afatakhadum min dunihi uliya'a and then have you taken apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uliya'a protectors? La yamlikuna li anfusihim they have no power even over their own selves. Naf'an waladharan, whether to bring benefit to their own selves, nor can they bring harm to their own selves. Words, what can they do for you? They cannot even, so an idol cannot even benefit itself. It cannot even harm itself. What in the world is it going to do for you? Kul, proclaim to them Nabi Akir. So this is just like Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. The same, the same arguments to repel shirk and the same arguments to establish tawheed that Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam used. His great, 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 great grandson, Sayyidina Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Mustafa al Mustaba, is being revealed by Allah in Quran to use for the Mushrikeen of Makkah Makarama. Same place, by the way. Ibrahim alayhi salam was also in Makkah Makarama. It shows you how deep shirk is. Shirk is also deep. Look at the Hindus. They've been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Shirk is deep when it enters into a person. It requires prophet after prophet after prophet, kitab after kitab after kitab to come. And verses of ayah to Qur'aniya, ayah, ayah, verses after verses to address this concept of shirk. Fair. Kul. Proclaim to them, Nabi Akrim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hal yastawil a'ma wal basir. Can the person who is blind and the one who can see, can they ever be equal? Am hal tastawil dhulamatu wa nur. And can indeed, and ask them further, can darknesses and light ever be the same? Am ja'alu lillahi shuraka'a. Or have they ascribed and made as partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, khalaku ka khalkihi. And they have created the like of his creation. Fatashaba hal khalku alayhim. So maybe that that creation seems alike to them. So therefore, kul. Uh, so kul Allahu khaliku kul shay. Kul say to them, Nabi Akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that Allah Taala is the creator of every single thing. In other words, that these people themselves create and fashion and model their idols, right? Uh, so say to them that Allah Taala is the Khalik of every single thing. Uhu al Wahid al Qahar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one being, the one and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and is Al-Qahar. He's the dominant, overpowering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
verse number 17. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to coin an example which means that he will distinguish and clarify all falsehood. Anjala min as ma'an. He, Allah, sends down rain, water, which means rain, from the sky. Fasalat odiyatun bi kadariha. And then the odia is the river beds that flow in the valleys, right? So fasalat is to flow. Odiyatun is those river beds that flow in valleys. Bi kadariha, according to their measure, right? According to the measure. Fahtamala sailu. A sail is the torrent or wave that comes. Fahtamal has fahtamala sailu zabadan rabian. So the torrent comes and it carries that, you know, the, the riverbed in the valley. It, the torrent comes and it carries a zabadan rabian, which is a rising foam. All right. So the foam and froth that appears that rises and swells on the surface of water. And then from that which they kindle in the fire, they heat in the fire, they kindle in the higher, what are they seeking? They're seeking hilya. So hilya is some type of ornament. Uh, so like the hilt, uh, ornamentation on swords, or ornamentation such as jewelry. So this is what they call being a blacksmith, right? Working the forges in the fire. Oh, mata'in. Or they're seeking some type of useful thing. So maybe they're making some utensils, right? They're forging, you know, I don't know, metal spoons or metal forks. So Allah Ta'ala is using this as an example, two examples for them, right? Okay. Mithluhu kathalik. Mithluhu kathalik. So that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning an example like this. What? Yadribullahu al haqqa wal batila. So just like those two examples, Mithluhu, kathalik yadribullahu al haqqa wal batila, thus does Allah ta'ala separate or set forth and expound upon the truth and the falsehood. So how is it in those examples? Allah Ta'ala will explain. فَأَمَّا zabadu. So remember zabadu was the froth uh, that comes, you know, the, the froth that comes on the surface of the water. As far as the froth, فَيَذْهَبُ جُفَاءً So the froth, it passes away. جُفَاءً It passes away. وَأَمَّا مَا يَنْفَعُ النَّاسَ فَيَمْكُثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ And as far as that which benefits humanity, that will remain on earth, which is but the water. Alright? So the froth on the water passes away, right? You can fizzles out, kind of. I don't know, people are more familiar with coke. If you pour the coke less really fast, the froth fizzles. But what benefits you, what is your uh, nafa, right, is that remains in the glass. Okay? So Allah Ta'ala is saying that the froth will pass away like drivel. Some have translated this even like scum. Uh, and that which benefits humanity that will remain. So the water remains. The water remains. Thus does Allah SWT coin and set forth examples. Thus does Allah Ta'ala coin and set forth examples. Alright? Okay. So this was the first example of the water. In the second example... What happens is when uh, they use the forge and they're heating metals in there. It can also be gold and silver, right? Uh, and then they're extracting the ornament or some utensil, something of utility. What happens in this forging process, the impurities that are on the attached to the metal, they rise to the top of the metal just the way the froth rises to the top of the water. And then during the forging process, the impurities are melted away from that metal such that the only thing you have left is the metal. So just maybe understand like this scientifically that those impurities burn at a lower temperature than the metal. So they start melting away and dropping away from the metal during the forging process. So batil, falsehood, 
and those false gods, false deities, false idols that they worship is like the froth on the water that will fade away or like the impurities on the metal that are melted away. But what remains at the end of the wave taking the water through the riverbeds in the valley is the water itself that is of benefit to humanity. And what remains after the forging process, after the impurities melt away, is the metal itself, which you will then either forge into, let's say, a sword or jewelry or a utensil or something like that. Okay? So sometimes, yes, one or two difficult words in Arabic require a lot of explanation. But this is the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why we should try, those of us who have the ability and time, to try to learn Arabic language. And don't be scared. You know, 90% of Arabic is extremely easy. And 10% yes is very difficult. But if Allah Ta'ala, it's His wish and will and His wisdom to illustrate some concept to us, some example to us, so we want to understand it. We want to understand what Allah Ta'ala is saying to us in this verse, uh, verse 17 of Surah Ra'ad, Surah 13. Okay, here, now back to the more simple Arabic. Verse 18, I've just mentioned here as outcomes in the hereafter. لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُ لِرَبِّهِمُ husna. And to those who answer the call of their Rabb, they answer the call to have Iman, they answer, they obey the commandments of Allah Ta'ala, they will get Al-Husna. They will have that which is most beautiful and excellent. Allah Ta'ala is just describing it with one Lord, Al-Husna. All beauty and excellence. وَالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَهُ And as far as those who do not answer Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, answer to Him. لَوْ أَنَّ لَهُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا Were they even to have all that is, were they even to possess and own all that is on the earth. وَمِثْلَهُ مَعْهُ And then the likeness of it in addition with that. لَفْتَدَوْ بِهِ Were they to try to do fidya, were they to try to ransom themselves, buy off the punishment. أُولَيْكَ لَهُمْ سُوءُ الْحِسَابِ Know that to them they will be in evil in their reckoning. وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمُ وَبِئْسَ الْمِهَادِ And their final dwelling place will be Jahannam. And what an evil and what a terrible mihad, a resting place and abode is it. Verse 19, then again continuing on this difference between the one on truth and the one on falsehood. أَفَمَنْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ الْحَقُّ And is the one who knows that indeed that which has been revealed to you, Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from your Rabb is al-haq. Kaman, can they be considered like kaman who are a'ma, like the one who is blind, in other words, blind to this truth, right? That what has been revealed is haq. Innama yatadhakkaru ulul albab. Indeed, only those who possess lub, only those who have subtle heart and ruh and spiritual and soul understanding coupled with their akal and mind understanding only such people will yatadhakkaru only such people will be able to get the guidance get the advice uh, from uh, these verses of Quran al-Karim verses 20 to 22 Allah Ta'ala is going to mention a number of attributes of the believers alladhina number one yufuna bi'ahdillahi that number one, they fulfill their promise, pledge, covenant, pact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they do not break the covenant. And they do not break the covenant. So, who are these people? Sorry, I shouldn't have put attributes of the believers. Uh, what I meant to say is these are the attributes of the ulul albab, right? Innama yatadhakkaru ulul albab. Who are the ulul albab? Alladhina. So this should read this, it's saying it's attributes of the ulul albab. Okay, who are the ulubab number one? The first thing that is mentioned is that they fulfill their pact, their ahad with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do not break the mithaq. So the mithaq can be referring to Allah subhanahu that Allah ta'ala alone is our Rabb. Uh, mithaq can be their pledge of being an abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second attribute, وَالَّذِينَ يَسِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوسَلَ and the second attribute of them is that they uh, join what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded to be joined. So this is often referred to as the mending and joining of relations. The mending and joining of relations. Okay, so first is their pledge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Uh, so... 
This can mean different pledges just by being the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second is mithaq. Mithaq can mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some have said that one can mean the pledges between a person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and another can be turned to mean pledges that human beings enter with one another. All right? Uh, so in that case, al-mithaq would mean pacts, treaties, contracts with humanity ahad referred to the covenant and pledge made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third thing is that they join what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded to be joined. So this is referring to the relations. They maintain relations and ties and relationships that Allah ta'ala wishes that they should maintain. Fourth attribute, وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخَافُونَ سُوءَ hisab That they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we, we can even take that separately. وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ that they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have due to the might and majesty and awe and reverence that they have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence the word khashiya has been used. But what they fear, khawf, in terms of they fear it itself, they fear it intrinsically, they view it as fearful. So when we use the word khashiya, it, uh, because we do have hope for Allah that also comes right we do have hope for Allah Ta'ala that we do fear Allah Ta'ala himself because of his essence his that his might he's doing to come but here what it's saying is they have awe and reverence and fear Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala due to their awe and reverence for him and what they fear itself and they fear lest they have an evil accounting evil reckoning means they're afraid of uh, you know, having a, uh, you know, being on the negative side, on the scales, on the day of judgment. And that terrifies them. That terrifies them. All right? So these are all people who are ul al-bab. And then continuing, and now verse 22, further of the attributes. وَالَّذِينَ sabaru, And they are those who are patient and steadfast. They are patient and steadfast. And we've explained this many times. Uh, seeking the expression of the pleasure of their Rabb. وَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ And they regular establish their prayer. وَأَنفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ And they spend out of that which Allah Ta'ala says, We, Allah Ta'ala, provided them. سِرًا وَأَلَانِيَّةً And they spend that secretly and openly. وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةً And they try to follow and they try to repel every evil deed with a good deed. They try to repel evil with good. Dar, And to these people, indeed, they will have the reward uh, of the abode, a dar. And a dar here is referring to dar as salam, the abode of everlasting peace. So verses 23 onward, Allah Ta'ala will describe what is that dar. What is that dar? Jannatu adnin. Those will be gardens. Gardens. <coughs> Some, you know, this Aden uh, is what in biblical English they called Eden. So you can call it the Gardens of Eden if you want in English. Yadkhulunaha, that they will enter therein. And now, very important, وَمَنْ salaha min abaihim wa azwajihim wa dhuriyatihim. And whomsoever salaha, who was ever virtuous, righteous, pious from their parents, forefathers, ancestors, وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ and from their spouses, وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ and their progeny. So it means that even in Jannah, inshallah, inshallah, may Allah make us and all of our family, elders and successors from the Salihin, that we will be together with family in Jannah. Then, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابِ And then the angels literally mean shall enter upon them from every gate. And what will they say? Hmm? Salamun alaykum bima sabartum fa ni'ma ukbadar. The peace be upon you, O inhabitants of Jannah, by, by virtue of bima sabartum, by virtue of what you endured, right? You endured the life of this world. Another can be bima sabartum by means of which you are patient, that you patiently waited for this next life. Fa ni'ma, and how beautiful and excellent it is, what ukbadar. This ultimate abode. Verse 26, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Allah yabsutu rizqa liman yasha'u wa yaqdir. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yabsutu, He extends the risk, the provision, the sustenance 
لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ to whom soever he wills وَيَقْدِرْ and he also apportions it وَيَقْدِرْ can also be وَيَقْدِرْ on its own would have meant he also apportions it but when it's taken in symmetry with يَبْسُتُ it means that Allah Ta'ala openly expands the risk without any accounting for whomsoever he wants and Allah Ta'ala can also limit it to a specific quantity وَيَقْدِرْ وَفَرُهُ بِالْحَيَاةِ dunya. They rejoice in the life of this world. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَعَ And what is the life of this world compared to the Akhirah except mata? Mata is here. Mata means fleeting enjoyment. Fleeting, ephemeral, you know, fluff. Fleeting, ephemeral, if you want fancy English, it's just fluff. وَيْكُونُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And those who disbelieve, they say, لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ If, why has a sign, so I hear it means sign, come upon him, it means the Blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his Rabb, in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, so call, respond to them, Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Ta'ala says that, respond to them, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُذِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِي إِلَيْهِ مَنْ أَنَاب Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will let Whoever he wants go astray, and he will guide to him whomsoever anab turns to him. All right, turns to him in longing, turns to him in yearning, turns to him in repentance. So this sign to be sent down, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saying, is this, this response is a sufficient sign for them. This response is a sufficient sign for them, and Allah is not going to send a sign that takes away iman bil ghaib such that they necessarily believe due to demonstration. Rather, Allah Ta'ala will keep the matter on Iman bil ghaib that we have to believe in Allah Ta'ala, the unseen being, but He will let whomsoever He wishes go astray, and He will guide to Him whomsoever turns towards Him, whoever is seeking Him. Alladina amanu wa tatma'innu kulubuhum bi dhikrillahi Indeed, those who believe, and they give solace and contentment and serenity and tranquility to their hearts bi dhikrillahi by means of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by means of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that ma'innu kulubuhum that their hearts have itminan with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta'ala declares an eternal truth ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu kulub that no one be well informed that only and only in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Tatma'innul kulub will the spiritual hearts ever have peace and tranquility. So this is a topic in the good old days we have given many talks on this topic, alright? And here dhikr means any and all forms of remembrance, generally remembrance itself, acts of remembrance, sayings of remembrance, remembrance with the tongue, remembrance of the heart, mindful remembrance, heartful remembrance. All of this is being referred. Any and all aspects of remembrance, dhikr, dhikr itself is the means by which the spiritual hearts get solace and contentment and tranquility. And then Allah Ta'ala mentions that it's only with the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala that the spiritual hearts can get itminan. So it's an error and mistake for us to think that we can give peace to our heart through entertainment or recreation or through even worse, na'udhu billah al-aman al-lafiz, haram things. The only thing that will really give peace to the soul, the heart of our soul, our ruhani heart, is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alladina amanu wa amilu salihati tuba luhum wa husna ma'ab. And indeed, those who believe and those who do righteous deeds and virtuous acts, tuba luhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, you know, blessed are they. Glad tidings for them. Hmm? Blessed are they. Glad t- blessed are they. Well, bl- blessings be for them. وَحُسْنُ ma'ab And the most beautiful, excellent return they will have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amin. Verse 30 to 31, Allah is going to talk about the might and power and different aspects of the recital of Qur'an al-Kareem. The actual recitation and recital of Qur'an al-Arabiyya. كَذَلَكَ أَرْسَلْنَاكَ فِي أُمَّةٍ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهَا أُمَمْ Allah Ta'ala is saying that thus have we sent you, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi to an Ummah community before whom other communities have already passed away. So this is the Middle East, right? Where many other communities have passed away. لِتَتْلُوَ عَلَيْهِمُ الَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ 
so that you may do tilawa, so that you may recite alayhim upon them, unto them, all that which Allah Ta'ala is saying, we Allah Ta'ala have revealed ilayka to you. وَهُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ rahman When they have disbelieved in Ar-Rahman, Allah Ta'ala, all merciful. قُلْ So proclaim to them, هُوَ Rabbi, He is my Rabb. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُو That there is no God except for Him. عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ matab, And upon Him alone do I place all of my trust. وَإِلَيْهِ matab, And to Him is uh, and, 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 and to him do I turn, right? Matab is the, the, the place towards we turn in Toba. To him is all my turning. Walaw anna Qur'anan suyyurat bihil jibalu And were it not, were, <coughs> were there a Qur'an <coughs> by means, suyyurat bihil jibalu, by means of which the mountains would have been set in motion. O kutti'at bihil ard or the earth would have been cleft into swaths or segments. O kullima bihil mota, or the dead were made to speak, balillahil amru jami'a. But no, to Allah SWT belongs the affair entirely. Afalam yayasil ladina amanu. And do not those who believe. Afalam <coughs> yayasil. أَسِلْ لَذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ لَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ لَهَدَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا So do not those who believe, they um, wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, which really means don't they know, but it sort of means that they wish that if Allah ta'ala had, لَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ had Allah ta'ala willed, لَهَدَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا That Allah ta'ala would have guided all of humanity. وَلَا يَزَالُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا to see bohum bima sanau, and those who uh, disbelieve, they <coughs> that calamity will never stop befalling them because of uh, because of that which they do. Okay, bima sanau kareotun that calamity will always fall upon them because of that which they have wrought, which they have committed. Autohulu kariba min darihim, or that they will come close, they will settle close to their homes, hatta yati wa'dullahi, until comes the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah la yukhliful mi'at, and indeed Allah ta'ala will not fail to fulfill His promise. He will not go against al-mi'at, the promise. Okay, so the first aspect here in this verse, uh, verse 31, is that the Qur'an is what Allah Ta'ala wishes it to be. Balillahil amru jami'a. To Allah Ta'ala belongs the command and the matter entirely and also about what is Qur'an. So the recitation is not going to be a, re- a recitation that is going to move uh, the mountains or split the earth. Uh, no, when Nabi Akrim Sallallahu recites the verses of Revelation to you, it's meant to move your heart and to split from Iman and Kufr. Uh, but as you know, elsewhere Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, right, uh, that the mountains rejected this burden because it was too much for them. And we know also, and we've already done earlier in this very same surah, that the mountains and the earth themselves and all that are in them and walk upon them do sajda to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, right? Okay. Nor is it going to be, uh, you know, Isa alayhi salam, yes, he revived the dead and he could make the dead speak, uh, but this is not uh, what Nabi Akrim sallallahu is going to do with the Quran. Allah Ta'ala's promise coming here, the Mi'ad, some of the ulama have taken that this refers to Fatih Makkah. In other words, the victory of deen. And we explained earlier in the series that the victory of deen in the case of Nabi Karim is not going to come through the punishment 
of some natural punishment overwhelming and destroying disbelievers and only the believers remaining. Rather, it will come through the victory of Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam, and it will come through the fact that the Sahaba Kiram will be the true bearers of the legacy of Islam. Verse 32, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to mention that their earlier messengers and all of these things as we've discussed were as a consolation to Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah ta'ala is saying, وَلَكَدْ اِسْتُحْزِعَ بِرُسُلٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ And indeed there have been messengers prior to you who were mocked. فَأَمْلَيْتُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا But I've granted respite to those who have disbelieved. ثُمَّ أَخَذْتُهُمْ And then after that I would seize them in my punishment. فَكَيْفَ كَانَ إِقَابْ And indeed, how was that seizing of mind? How was my ikab, my penalty, my retribution when it came upon them? So this is just a mention of earlier messengers and showing that this is a consolation to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alright. Now the people of earlier scripture. وَالَّذِينَ آتَيْنَا هُمُ الْكِتَابَ and as far as those, Allah Ta'ala is saying, is to whom that we have bestowed upon earlier scripture revelation, what do they do? يَفْرَهُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ They actually rejoice and are happy and delighted in the revelation that has been revealed and set down upon you. So what does this mean? Uh, this means that... Uh, the true... Jews and Christians were happy upon the revelation of Qur'an al-Kareem. Were happy upon the revelation of Qur'an al-Kareem and they are the ones who then accepted Deen of Islam because they, as Allah Ta'ala mentioned earlier, and we did it already, uh, that in their Torah and their Injil were signs and mention of the pledge taken from all the Prophets that they would all follow the last and final Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And so when they became happy, it means they became happy and they accepted deen of Islam. They accepted deen of Islam. But, وَمِنَ الْأَحْزَابِ مَنْ يُنْكِرُوا بَعْضَهُ But from amongst the different factions, from amongst the different parties, are those who deny part of it. They deny part of it. Obviously, they deny the part that was new, uh, in other words, that mentions the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, but they accepted the part that talks about heaven and hell and day of judgment and life after death and things that obviously the Ahl Kitab believed. So, Kul, so proclaimed to them, Nabiya Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna umirtu an abdullah. I have not been commanded with anything other than that I should worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ushika bihi and that I should not associate and ascribe any partners to him. Ilayhi adu, and to him do I call in my prayer and my supplication. Wa ilayhi ma'ab, and to him is my return. That's all you should simply say to them. It means you're not going to change anything for them. You're not interested in what they're happy with, what they don't like. You will simply mention who you are. So that is the simple statement of who Sayyidina Rasulullah wasallam is. Then Allah Ta'ala is going to mention simply in the next verse what Qur'an al-Kareem is. What Qur'an al-Kareem is. وَكَذَلَكَ أَنزَلْنَاهُ حُكْمًا عَرَبِيًّا And Allah Ta'ala says, And thus did we uh, reveal Qur'an al-Kareem hukman as a decisive judgment. As a decisive judgment. عَرَبِيًّا in the Arabic language. وَلِنِتَّبَعْتَ and this is an intense verse Allah Ta'ala is addressing Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And were you to follow them, were you singular Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to follow Ahwa'uhum, their whims and caprices, Ba'dama ja'aka min al-ilm. After the fact that knowledge has come to you, Malaka min Allahi min waliyu wala waq, then you Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would not have had any wal, any protector, Wali, any protector, wala waq, any defender against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar kabira. This is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing tirbiyah. Not that Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa ever in the slightest imagined, but Allah ta'ala is establishing that Allah ta'ala is Malik and Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his abd. Is his abd. Hmm? Allahu Akbar kabira. This is the intense verses of Quran al-Kareem. One of the most strong verses uh, revealed 
to Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And again, one can imagine knowing the soft and tender nature of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how his hair would have hung, grown gray and whitened at this. Verse 38, 39, Allah Ta'ala simply mentioning earlier messengers. وَلَكَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَجَأْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَةً وَمَا كَانَ Okay. And indeed we have sent messengers before you, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, and we made for them spouses and children. So the exception to this is all of you know is Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, who is an exception in many ways, right? I did this for you before, earlier in the series, uh, is different exceptional aspects and why it's very interesting to have a invitation from Muslims to Christians to believe in Quran al Karim because the Quran al Karim accepts and acknowledges and has a fascinating understanding of actually Isa alayhi salam and Christianity. So Nabi Isa alayhi salam did not marry and did not have children when he was on earth originally, but then Allah Ta'ala has raised him up to his divine presence and when Allah Ta'ala sends him back, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam will marry and will have children. All right? Okay. Wa makana li rasulna an yatiya bi ayatin illa bi idhnillahi. And Allah Ta'ala is making clear that it is not for any messenger at all that they should bring a verse of revelation from Allah Ta'ala, a verse illa bi idhnillahi except with the permission of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Second, it can mean that it is not for any messenger that they can manifest a sign from Allah Ta'ala except by leave of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Then likulle ajalin kitab, and then for every term, kitabun there is a book. All right, for every term, there is a book. So this can, this uh, here doesn't mean a, a scriptural revelation. Kitab here means that for every term, there is a fixed appointed time known in the knowledge of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, which is so permanent it is in His written. In a knowledge that is as permanent as if it is written. Verse 40. But Imma Nuriannaka Ba'dalladi Naiduhum. And whether, another sponsor addressing the Biyakrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and whether we show you, singular Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a part of Ba'dalladi Naiduhum, a part of what we have promised them. Right? So Allah Ta'ala has promised uh, the disbelievers a kind of reckoning. Whether Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shows part of that reckoning to him, oh, or Natawafayanaka, or we choose to, uh, you know, uh, cause you, I mean, literally means take you back to us, in other words, cause the Prophet to die, فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْكَ الْبَلَاغِ, that there is nothing incumbent upon you except for delivering the message, except for conveying uh, the message. وَعَلَيْنَا الْحِسَابِ And Allah says upon we, upon us, Allah Ta'ala is saying is al-hisab, is the reckoning. So it means that yes, Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we know now in hindsight, did see a part of it, ba'ad of it, was the Fatih Makkah, uh, Battle of Hunayn, etc. And then obviously after that, much, much more in the time of the Khulafai Rashidun. But in this, at this time, in this verse, Allah Ta'ala would have been telling Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we may even cause you to die and take you out of this world, even before any of the Reckoning comes upon them. Verses 41 to 42, Allah Ta'ala makes it clear that ultimately, no matter what, it is Allah Ta'ala's plan that will always prevail. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا مِنْ أطرافها. Allah Ta'ala says that, did they not see, right? Did they not gaze, did they not wonder upon, did they not ponder upon, did they not consider? anna means how we... Uh, it literally means how we set upon the land. Nan uh, so we did tankis of it, we reduced it, min atrafeha, from its outlying regions. So we reduced it of its outlying regions. One meaning of this, uh, some of the ulama of say, they're talking about, it's about Fatimakka. So Allah is describing the Prophet and the companions coming on Fatimaka as if not till al arda Allah Ta'ala himself comes upon the land al arda he refers to Makkah Mukarma and that he reduced its inhabitants min atrafiha from around it from their surroundings
Wallahu yahkumu la mu'aqiba li hukmihi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala renders his decisive judgment. La mu'aqiba. Remember mu'aqibat. Indians, there's nothing which can stave off, that can be a security force against li hukmihi, against the decisive judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uhuwa suriyul hisab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is extremely swift in the reckoning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is extremely swift in the reckoning. وَكَلْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ And then indeed those who came before them also plotted and schemed فَلِلَّهِ الْمَكْرُ جَمِيعًا And to Allah Ta'ala belongs all the planning and the devising. يَعْلُمُ مَا تَكْسِبُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows all that which every soul, every self commits. وَسَيَعْلَمُ الْكُفَّارُ لِمَنْ أُكْمَدَّارُ And soon surely will the disbelievers learn and know to whom will be granted the ultimate abode. In other words, they will know that the believers will be triumphant. وَيُقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَسْتَ مُرْسَلًا And then those who disbelieve, they say regarding the Prophet ﷺ, they say, addressing him, they say, You are not someone who has been sent. You are not a messenger sent. قُلْ Proclaim to them, Nabiya Kareem Wasallam, كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا Allah Ta'ala is sufficient as a witness. بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ Between me and between me and you. وَمَنْ إِنْدَهُ إِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ And... and and with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the knowledge of the book. Alright. وَمَنْ إِنْدَهُ إِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ And so, وَمَنْ إِنْدَهُ إِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ And whomsoever has the knowledge of the book is also a witness. So, كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ And Allah Ta'ala suffices a witness between me and you. And whomsoever has knowledge of the book also suffices as a witness between you and me. Okay, so the ataf of وَمَنْ إِنْدَهُ إِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ is بِاللَّهِ كُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَمَنْ إِنْدَهُ إِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ all right, if I were to recite it and read it in Arabic in a different way, grammatically, to make it clear in English. All right. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how to respond to this claim of the disbelievers. And this is especially an honor to those of the Ahl Kitab who accepted Iman. So the fact that the Jews and Christians who were converts, who accepted to Islam, they're enough to... Bear witness that Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a messenger sent by Allah Ta'ala and ultimately Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala himself is sufficient to uh, bear witness that Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is truly sent by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now that ends uh, Surah Al-Ra'ad, Surah 13, The Thunder. Now I move to Surah 14, Surah Ibrahim. Surah Ibrahim is the fifth in the sixth series of six surahs. Uh, that begin with Alif, Lam, Ra, sometimes have Meme, and then after that in the very first verse mentions something about Kitab, about the Qur'an al Karim. This has largely agreed to be uh, revealed in Makkah Mukarramah, a few verses possibly revealed in Medina Manawra. Uh, there's in the mention of Nabi Ibrahim is here, uh, partially just a few verses that will come towards the end of the surah. Uh, and this surah talks a lot about trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being grateful for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and then Allah ta'ala reprimands those who reject Allah ta'ala's messengers and who are ungrateful for the blessings that Allah ta'ala has given them. And there's a very important verse here also about shaitan. Uh, so let us begin. Uh, surah Ibrahim, by the way, for any of you who ever, it's a nice surah to teach non-Muslims. Uh, you know, I would recommend it like for courses uh, for non-Muslims. All right. 
Surah Ibrahim, Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Ra Kitabun Anzalnahu Ilayka Littukhrij Al-Nasa Minu Dhulumati Ila Nur Bi-Idhni Rabbihim Ila Sirat Al-Aziz Al-Hamid Alif Lam Ra, this is the book that, is, that has been revealed, uh, that he, Allah Ta'ala, has revealed this book Ilayka to you, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so that you, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may take out humanity from all of their darknesses, all of their oppressions, all of their obscurities, all of their confusions, ila nur, into light, into brilliance, into radiance, bi'idhni rabbihim, by permission of their Rabb. He is the Rabb of all of Anas. And you should bring them where? Ila siratin aziz al-hamid, to the path of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and al-hamid, the all Praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then verse number two, Allahu ladhi. Okay, so actually we should read this in connection with what came before. Ila salat al aziz al hamid al lahi al ladhi lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al ard. So this is a place where the t- sentence is continuing, but an ayah is breaking the sentence in the middle. All right, And you had places where the sentence ends and the ayah ends. And you have places where the ayah encapsulates many sentences, but one topic. And you've had places where one ayah encapsulates many sentences and many topics. And you also have places where the topic breaks in the ayah, even though the sentence doesn't. Khair. إِلَى صِرَاتِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ اللَّهِ الَّذِي لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ That to, the, to take them out by the permission and warrant and leave of their Rabb to the path of the Almighty, the all self-praised and praiseworthy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that being that to whom belongs mastery and ownership and sovereignty and dominion over all that lies in the transcendent realms and all that lies in this earth, وَوَيْلُ لِلْكَافِرِينَ مِنْ أَذَابٍ شَدِيدٍ And woe to the disbelievers, uh, woe, to the, woe to the disbelievers for a severe punishment. أَلَّذِينَ يَسْتَهِبُّونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا So who are those who disbelieve? They are those who love deeply the life of this world. أَلَى الْآخِرَةِ Having preferred it over the hereafter. They are those who have loved and preferred the life of this world over the hereafter. Second, وَيُسُدُّونَ أَنْ سَبِيلَ اللَّهِ And they turn away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fourth, وَيَبْغُونَهَا إِوَجًا And they seek to make the path leading to Allah ta'ala crooked. They seek to cast doubt in it, cast dispersions on it, confuse people. That they try to make a path that is mustaqim, straight and steadfast. They try to corrupt it and pollute it and make it appear to be crooked. أُولَيْكَ فِي ذَلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ And indeed such people are in a error that is manifestly as far astray. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we do not send any messenger, illa, except بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ Except that he comes in the language of his people. لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ So that he may make clear to them. فَيُذِلُّ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ And Allah Ta'ala lets wander astray whomsoever he wants. وَيَحْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ And he guides whomsoever he wills. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And he is almighty and all wise. So from this we understand that at least for every linguistic community, they must have been sent a messenger. So Allah Ta'ala has sent prophets and messengers to all cultural, linguistic, ethnic communities throughout the history of humanity. Uh, they may not each have gotten one in their lifetime, but there would have, would have been one sent to them as a community, and their legacy and teaching was meant to have lasted however long the term was, 100 years, 300 years, and that community falls under that prophet. Right? And so now Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has come, and we saw in the previous surah, Surah Al-Rad, that Quran is Quran and Arabiya. And Nabi Karim sallallahu is also making the revelation clear in the language of the Ahl Quraysh, the Ahl Makkah, which was the pure pristine Arabic that they spoke and they knew. Verses 5 to 8, Allah subhanahu wa makes brief mention of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Nabi Musa alayhi salam. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا And indeed we sent Musa alayhi salam with our signs. أَنْ أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ ذُلَّمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ So the same phrase. So there's a connection. 
uh, and uh, so the same way Musa Islam was sent to take the Bani Israel out of darkness into light, the same way Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has come to take people out of darkness into light, so that he may take out his community. So Balakan Arsana Musa Bayatana did be sent Musa Islam with our signs, quote that you may take out your community, like Allah Ta'ala is addressing Musa Islam, from darknesses and oppressions and obscurities into new and radiance. وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ And you should warn them and advise them and admonish them and remind them about the days of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. أَيَّامِ اللَّهِ The days of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So this can mean those days in which they received blessings from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The days in which they received blessings from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. In the fi la ayatin likulli sabarin shukur. And indeed, in this they are signs. Indeed, in this they are signs for every person who is extremely patient sabar, and every person who is very grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who is shukur. Every person who is very patient to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and every person who is very Grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayam Allah can also mean generally the times of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the changing uh, stages that Allah ta'ala places upon different communities. So history, uh, simply speaking history. With Qala Musa lakawmihith kuru ni'matullahi alaykum. When Musa alayhi said to his people that remember the bounties and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa upon you. Id anjaakum min ala fir'awna. When Allah ta'ala rescued you and gave you salvation from the people of Fir'aun. Yusumunakum su al adabi, And they were inflicting the most terrible of punishments upon you. Wa yudhabbihuna abna'akum. They were slaughtering and sacrificing like animals, your sons, and they were sparing your women, but it can also mean that they were sparing, yes, yeah, sparing your women. And in that, really, there was a, and in that, there was a great, tremendous trial from your Rabb. With ta'adhana rabbukum, and when your Rabb proclaimed and announced, لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ So this is the history of this verse. It's actually what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Bani Israel recounted in the Qur'an al-Kareem. When لَإِنْ uh, شَكَرْتُمْ That if you are grateful لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Allah ta'ala said that surely we will increase you. وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ But if you were denied the blessings of Allah ta'ala in the adabi shadid Allah ta'ala said that indeed my punishment is severe. وَقَالَ مُوسَى in takfuru antum waman fil ardi jami'a and Musa alayhi salam he said to his people that if you disbelieve or if you are ungrateful for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you and all whomsoever is on earth jami'an entirely fa inna Allah la ghaniyun hamid well indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghani we've done this before that he's self-sufficient he's beyond need hamid he is praised himself self-praised he doesn't need you he does not need you all right so being grateful to Allah Ta'ala is for the sake of our own benefit. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions several names of several earlier messengers. Alam yatikum naba'ul ladina min kablikum Has not come to you the narratives and stories and events and incidents of those who came before you? Qawminuhin, the people, the community of Nuh alayhi salam. In other words, they were destroyed. Wa Adin, and they were also destroyed. Wa Thamuda, and they were also destroyed. Wa ladina min ba'dihim. La ya'lamuhum illallah. And as far as those who came after them, no one knows about them except for Allah. No one knows them except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ja'at hum rusuluhum bil bayyinat. And uh, whoever those communities are who none knows except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their messengers, rusuluhum, brought, came to them with clear proofs. With clear proofs. So again, there Allah ta'ala knows best all the messengers he sent. We don't know. Okay. Faraddu aidiyahum fi afwahihim. So literally it means they thrust their hands into their mouths. They thrust their hands into their mouths. Meaning either they did so out of anger or enmity or hostility or they did so because they were mocking. 
but it's a negative, it's a metaphor and a simile for a negative response to the messengers, alayhim as salam, ajma'in. وَقَالُوا And then they said, إِنَّا كَفَرْنَا بِمَا أُرْسِلْتُمْ بِهِ Indeed, we disbelieve and we deny all that which you have been sent with. وَإِنَّا لَفِي شَكِّمْ مِمَّا تَدْعُونَنَا إِلَيْهِ مُرِيبٍ is the, and then they said, uh, so we, we disbelieve and deny everything with which you have been sent. And we are murib, we are in doubt about that which you call us. Okay, so we are in doubt, uh, uh, in shuck, and about that which you call us. Qalat rusuluhum. So their messengers replied to them, Afillahi shakun. Can there be any doubt regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Fatir is samawati wal ard, the being who is the very originator of all the transcendent realms on the earth. Yad'ukum le yagfirullakum min dunubikum. And he calls you, yad'ukum, he is calling you, in other words, to iman, to tawheed and iman. Le yagfirullakum min dunubikum, so that he may forgive you for your sake, all of your sins. And he will grant you a reprieve until an appointed time. So these disbelievers, they responded. What did they say? In antum illa bashirum mithluna, that you are nothing other than human like ourselves. And you want nothing other than to stop us. Uh, uh, yet to stop us or to prevent us or turn us away from ma uh, amma from all that which our forefathers used to perpetually worship fatuna bisultanim mubin so therefore you should bring to us a clear manifest authority qalat lahum so all the messengers they said to them qalat lahum rusuluhum all their messengers they said to them in nahnu illa basharun mithlukum. Yes, we accept, affirm that, that we indeed are nothing other than humans like yourselves. We are nothing other than human beings like yourselves. So this includes Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. He is not divine, not the son of Allah Ta'ala, has no divinity, he is also human like every other human. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَمُنُّ عَلَى مَنْ yasha. However, Allah Ta'ala favors with His grace Upon whom serve he wills, min ibadihi, from his servants and slaves. Meaning, explaining that Allah Ta'ala has chosen out of his favor to grant them nubuwa, to grant them risala, to make them messengers and prophets. وَمَا كَانَ لَنَا أَن نَأْتِيَكُمْ بِسُلْطَانِ And it is not for us in any way to bring you this clear manifest authority that you ask for illa bi idnillahi except by the permission and leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala lahi fal yatawakkal al mu'minun and indeed upon Allah ta'ala and upon Allah ta'ala alone do the believers completely rely and trust wa ma lana alla natawakkal ala lahi and why should we not trust in and depend upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa kan hadana subluna when indeed he has guided us to our ways wa nas and therefore we shall endure patiently whatever you whatever harm you choose to inflict on us so these are again the messengers addressing the disbelievers and upon Allah Ta'ala alone rely and trust those who are the ones who are trusting in Him and those who disbelieved the Rusulihim in their messengers, La Nukrijanakum min Ardina, we will take you out and expel you from our land. Oh, Latau Dunna fi Milatina, or you will uh, revert us, or or or, uh, or you should return and revert to Aud, return, revert fi Milatina to our tradition, to our religious tradition. So again, now this is this is all giving solace to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the same thing happened to him, that the Ahlul Quraysh of Makkah Makarama said that you're many of the Mushrikeen of Makkah Makarama said you're just a human like us. We're not. You're just trying to make us leave the religion that our forefathers were always established on. We, you know, we are going to, you know, make you leave our land. We will expel you from our land unless 
the only other option is or you return to our religion same thing same thing fa'oha ilayhim rabbuhum so then their rub revealed unto them what la nuhlikanna dhalimin atas says surely certainly we i allah in my might and power will destroy dhalimin the wrongdoers wala nuskinan wala nuskinannakum al arda and we will make you believers dwell in the land al arda min ba'dihim after them dhalika liman khafa maqami and that is for those who fear my status my station my rank wa khafa wa eid and who fear my threats who fear my status my rank and who fear my threat So this is a promise from Allah Ta'ala to the messengers of Allah Islam is mine that he will assist them and their enemies by destroying them by destroying them and he will save and cause to inherit the earth who those who fear the rank and station of Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala and who fear the wa'id who fear the threat from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Okay verse 22 is about shaitan So the rest of the intervening verses are more about the disbelievers and verse 22 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clearly suggesting that the disbelievers are often under the influence of shaitan but then so describes what will shaitan say to them on the day of judgment waqala shaitanu lamma qudi al amr and shaitan will say to them when lamma qudi al amr when the matter has been decided the matter has been decreed Okay so this is referring to the day of judgment the hereafter good al amr can also mean after the day of judgment when all of the day of judgment has also been decreed it means the residents of jannah have gone there and the residents of jahannam have gone there and he will address them and say what uh, sorry inna allaha wa'adakum inna allaha wa'adakum and he will say to them that indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had promised you wa'adakum I promised you wa'd al-haqqi a promise that was true wa wa'adtukum and I also promised you I shaitan also made a promise to you fa akhlaftukum but I betrayed you I went back on my promise I went back on my promise to you wa ma kana li alaykum min sultan and you have wa ma kana li and I had not alaykum over you min sultan in any authority illa anda otukum except all that i could do was i could call you i could invite you to evil that's it i could not compel you to do it i could not force you to do it all i could do was but call you to do it fastajabtum li and you responded to me fastajab the same words that are used when we're supposed to hearken to allah taala's command respond to him you respond to me fala tulumu ni so don't you all blame me walumu anfusakum but rather you should blame your own selves hmm? rather you should blame your own selves ma ana and shaitan will say that i am not in any way be musrikhikum i am not in any way going to uh be your helper hmm i will not in any way be your helper Musrikum also means that I can uh, I cannot respond uh, to your calls for help. Wa ma antum bi musrikhiya nor will you be able to respond to my cries for help. Inni kafartu bima ashraktu moon. I disbelieve in your ascribing me as a partner min qablu from before. Inna dhalimin lahum adhabun azim. and as far as the zalimin go they will have a painful punishment ini shaitan is going to say all this this all the mukula of shaitan allah akbar kabira so he's openly telling them that i promised you but i went back on my promise means that i lied right uh that i lied so whether it was his lie to the disbelievers that allah Ta'ala doesn't exist or that the day of judgment doesn't exist or that the idols will protect them and it suggests that a lot of shirk is due to shaitan this also what this verse is revealing very important that shaitan has tried to lead bani adam away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by calling people and inviting people to beliefs of shirk 
to beliefs of shirk. All right. And the second thing that was clear also that he just called and he didn't force or compel anyone and human beings respond. They themselves choose to follow shaitan. And in the day of judgment and the hereafter, shaitan is saying, I will not be able to reply to your cries of help and you will not be able to reply to my cries of help. It means we are of no benefit to one another on this day. We are of no benefit to one another on this day. Verses 24 to 26, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coins a parable known as the parable of the good word. So the good word, famous parable of kalimatin tayyiba, and that is referred to the kalima la ilaha illallah. Alam tara kayfa zaraballahu mathalan kalimatan tayyiba. And do you not reflect and ponder and see how Allah Ta'ala set forth for you an example of the goodly word, the pure word, kashajaratin tayyiba. Just like that pure wholesome tree, Asluha thabitun, whose uh, roots are firm. Just like that pure, tr- noble, wholesome tree whose roots are firm, wa far'uha, and its offshoots, its branches, fissamai, are so wide spreading that they reach into the sky. They reach into the sky. Dutti ukulaha, that tree brings forth its fruit. Right, it's edibles, it's fruit. Kullahinin at all in every time, in every season, biha by permission by leave of its rub. Alright. So this Kalima Tayyiba is the Shahada and the Shahada has firm roots and has many branches which can mean number one, all of the different Mursaleen, all the different messengers and prophets of Layma Islamic mind. And it brings forth its fruit at its appointed time. So in the age of one prophet will come the, the fruit of that prophet. And the age of this age that we live in is the age of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Some have also taken this to mean that it's the shajara means the tree that is its root is planted in your heart, which is of iman. And then it brings forth a'mal salih virtuous actions, right and deeds that are so numerous. It is as if they reach the sky. So numerous as if they reach the sky. Alright, then going back to the end of verse 25. And thus does Allah Ta'ala coin and set forth examples and parables and metaphors and similes for people so that they may seek guidance and they may seek advice and heed. And then Allah Ta'ala gives the likeness of a Foul word, a foul word. Kashajaratin khabitha, that is the likeness of a foul tree. It's <coughs> tussat min fokil ardi, and it is uh, the foul tree is uprooted from the face of this earth. Malaha min qalar, it has no stability, it has no stability whatsoever. So that is the likeness of a foul tree. So that is the any and all beliefs of kufr, any and all false ideologies. Then Allah Ta'ala is sticking with this notion. Uh, Allah Ta'ala says, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ And Allah Ta'ala makes firm and steadfast those who believe with a قَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ With a firm and steadfast goal. With a firm and steadfast speech in the life of this world and in the Akhirah. So, uh, one meaning is that this Qawli Thabit is the Kalima La Ilaha Illallah. Or the full Kalima, if you will, La Ilaha Illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is why it's also very powerful to make a weird or repetitive zikr of Kalima La Ilaha Illallah. To make a weird and repetitive dhikr of the kalima la ilaha illallah. وَيُذِلُّ اللَّهُ ذَالِمِينَ And Allah SWT lets wander astray the wrongdoers and the unjust. وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ And Allah SWT does whatever He so wishes. 
Then verses 32 to 33, more description of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. Allah alladhi khalaka samawati wal arda. Allah subhanahu ta'ala is that being who has created the transcendent realms and the earth. Wa anzala min as samai ma'an. And he causes to come down, sends down from the sky water, which is rain. فَأَخْرَجِ بِهِمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ رِزْقًا لُكُمْ And he brings forth from means of that water, the rain that comes on the land, from fruits that are رِزْقًا لُكُمْ that are sustenance and provision for you. وَسَخَلَ لَكُمُ الْفُلْكَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made boats subservient to your command and direction and navigation. لِتَجْرِيَ فِي الْبَحْرِ بِأَمْرِهِ So that you may course and sail and navigate through the ocean bi amrihi with his command wasakhara lakum al anhar and allah ta'ala similarly has made the rivers as well uh, has made rivers as well uh, you know uh, subservient and subjugated to humanity wasakhara lakum al shams wal qamara now what does this mean that he has made the sun and moon subservient to you the sun and moon subservient to you Whereas we cannot imagine that the sun and moon are subservient to us. Well, let me finish it. Da'ibaini. Da'ibaini. Da'ibaini means that he has made them. Uh, da, yeah, that he has made them constantly subservient to you. nahar, And he has made the night and the day also subservient to you. He has made the night and the day also subservient to you okay so da ebeni uh, literally means from a habit so it's a regularized habit means the orbits of the moon and the stationary sense of the sun and all the planets orbiting around it are da'ib, are in a habit, are, are regular, are stable. All right. Now, subjugating doesn't mean that the sun and the moon follow our directions or follow our commands. What it means, rather, is that the existence of the sun and moon and their habitual, regular orbits are done for our sake. So Allah Ta'ala has subjugated them for our sake. Right, in the sense that this is what enables us to tell time, this is what enables us to have seasons, and the alternating of the seasons is beneficial to us. Similarly, in the sense what I mean, Allah Ta'ala said, Basakhir lakum layla wa nahar, that Allah Subhanahu has subjugated for your sake the night and the day. Uh, uh, so Allah Ta'ala has made the night and day subservient for your sake. And again, this is because the alternating of the day and the night has benefits for us, that we can rest in the night, and that we can earn in the brilliance of the day, etc. وَأَتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you from, so something from, كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ From all that of which you ask of Him. وَإِن تَأُدُّ نَعْمَةُ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا there's an often very famous recited verse of Quran that were you to try to count and enumerate the blessings of Allah Ta'ala, you would never be able to encompass them. Innal insana ladalumun kafar. Indeed, humanity is wrongdoing and is ungrateful. So this is a major theme here, the ungratefulness of humanity. And obviously Allah Ta'ala's blessings are so much that we could never ever count them. But in response to those countless blessings, we still don't obey. So we're the loom, we're still wrongdoing, and we still don't give proper thanks and gratitude. So we're kafar, we're extremely ungrateful. Verses 35 onward are going to be the passages about Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, after whom this surah is named. وَإِذْ And remember, when? قَالَ إِبْرَهِيمُ رَبِّجْ أَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا When Nabi Ibrahim the same, he made dua from Makkah Mukarramah that, O oh my Rabb, make Makkah Mukarramah, make this land, this city, آمِنًا, make it secure. وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ And make, uh, وَبَنِيَّ uh, وَبَنِيَّ وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَسْنَامِ and keep me and my children ever from worshipping idols. Rabbi, 
that oh my Rabb, surely these idols have led many astray from humanity. فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي And whomsoever follows me, he is of me. And this is a, you know, a series of hadith, and, um, many hadith that Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, لَيْسَ مِنِّي That person isn't of me. And the notion of ittiba. So the same thing for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that whoever does ittiba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is truly from his ummah. If it's true about Ibrahim alayhi salam, it's true about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَنْ asani. And whosoever disobeys me, فَإِنَّكَ أَغْفُورُ rahim Indeed, you, Allah Ta'ala, are all forgiving, all merciful. All forgiving and all merciful. رَبَّنَا O our Rabb, إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ بِوَادٍ غَيْرَ ذِي زَرْئٍ That, O our Rabb, indeed, I have settled some of my children, my progeny, in a valley that is without any crop, any vegetation, is completely barren. In the Beitik al Muharram, near uh, your sacred home, yani near Beitul Kaaba. Rabbana liyukimu salata. That, O oh, our Rabb, O oh, our Rabb, let them uh, pray, establish the prayer. Faj al afidatam min al nasi tahwi ilayhim. And then cause the hearts of people to incline towards them. Warzukhum min al thamarati. And give them. And provide them with the fruits, la allahum yashkurud, so that hopefully they will be grateful and thankful to you. Hmm? So they may be grateful and thankful to you. So this is when Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, left his wife Hajra Rajatanha and his son Nabi Ismail salam, and Allah Ta'ala sent him off on some command. And this is the famous incident then when Sayyidina Hajar went on she ran between Safa and Marwa, which is today commemorated in the Sa'i on Umrah and Hajj. And finally then uh, the water gushed forth and then she said Zam Zam, which means stop, stop, to stop the water from flooding and drowning baby Ismail Islam. And she came down from Marwa uh, and then this is the origin of Zam Zam as well. So all of this is being referred to here. And then when Nabi Ibrahim is making dua to Allah Ta'ala, that may Allah Ta'ala turn uh, the direction of people towards that progeny. So may Allah Ta'ala make what he's saying is in making dua, that may Allah Ta'ala turn. And the reason why it's being mentioned here in Quran al and revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu is that Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam had made a dua that people of the city of Makkah Makarmah, their hearts should be turned towards his son. Son can mean Ismail Islam, but son can also mean descendant progeny, means Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then now Nabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is having solace that I have the du'as of Ibrahim Alayhi Islam with me. And it may even indeed be that Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali, other Meccan Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, they hearts, their hearts turned towards the Prophet ﷺ and accepted iman due to the blessing and barakah of the dua of Nabi Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then this passage continues the du'as of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Rabbana, O our Rabb, inna ka ta'lum wa ma tukhfi, that indeed you know uh, that which we hide and keep secret. And you know that which we disclose and reveal. And nothing is hidden and kept secret from Allah Ta'ala. Fil ardi nor on earth. Wala fil sama'i nor in the sky in the transcendent realms. Alhamdulillah alladhi wahaba li ala al-kibari isma'i lava ishaq. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it, this is Nabi Ibrahim as I'm saying. Wahaba li who bestowed upon me, who gifted me. Al al kibri in my old age, Ismail and Ishaq, who gave me these two sons in my old age. Inna Rabbi la sami dua, and indeed my Rabb is all hearing to dua. He the hear in my Rabb is the one who hears all supplications. So now, uh, even though Nabi Ibrahim is making dua to Allah, Ta'ala, he's saying, Allah, Ta'ala, you know best. As humanity, what we hide and what we disclose, Allah Ta'ala knows best. Uh, and then Ibrahim is doing shukr, expressing his gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving him Ismail through his wife Hajra and Ishaq to his wife Sara, alayhim as-salam ajma'in, radiallahu ta'ala anhunna ajma'in. Uh, even though he was at an age 
where that would not have been likely or maybe even not have been physically possible. Important to see that the first thing that he makes to offer is salah. Right? Rabij anni muqim as salah. And this is something that we should also make dua wa min dhurriyati. Uh, as I didn't maybe read it. Rabij anni muqim as salah ta wa min dhurriyati. Rabbana wa taqabbal dua. That, oh my Rabb, make me amongst those who firmly, steadfastly establish the prayer and from all my children and progeny. So if anyone wants to know that all oh, my children don't pray, how can I get my children to pray? The question is, number one, have you made dua to Allah Ta'ala? Number two, have you worked hard to fulfill this dua that you yourself regularly establish the salah? Number three, have you made dua that Allah Ta'ala make your children and progeny those who regularly establish the salah? Rabbana wa taqabbal dua That, O our, o our Rabb, uh, accept my dua. رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ That, O oh, our Rabb, forgive me and my parents, my two parents, and all believers. يَوْمَ يُكُمُ hisab On that day when the hisab, the reckoning, will be established. Hmm? So again, this is these wonderful du'as to make in, you know, after atayat or after salah or generally at tahajjud. Uh, and it's very important for us, inshallah, to learn and make use of more and more the Qur'anic du'as. The Quranic du'as, and in and this is a du'a that you know Nabi Ibrahim Salam has made for us as well. If he's making du'a of the Maghfirah of the Mu'minin, so we have the du'as of Ibrahim Salam making du'a for Maghfirah. So again, when we make a sin to Allah, we can make du'a to Allah. Ya Allah, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. Ya Allah, not only am I asking you for my forgiveness, but my great great grandfather, Prophet Sayyidina Ibrahim Salam, he made du'a to you to send your maghfir on the mu'mineen. Allah Ta'ala, out of the nisbat of his du'a to you, I ask that you accept his du'a to you and forgive me. And similarly, Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam made du'a for the maghfir of this ummah. And one can similarly make du'a to Allah Ta'ala, seeking forgiveness, invoking the prophetic du'a, seeking uh, forgiveness for the ummah. Alright, so that was the passage about Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. The passage about Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam and the surah is named uh, after that surah Ibrahim. On verse 44, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions clearly that on the day of judgment, all humanity will wish they followed the messengers that were sent to them and spoke to them in their own languages. nasa. So this is going back to now, this is telling the Prophet Muhammad that Ya Rasulullah that you should warn humanity. Of what? Of a day. Yawma yati humul adab. A day in which a punishment will come to them. A day on which a punishment will come to them. For yakulul ladina zalamu. And on that day, those who were wrongdoers will say, Rabbana. They will say, O oh, our Rabb. Akhirna ila ajalin kareeb. That grant us reprieve for just a short term that is near. Nujib, da'wataka. We will respond to the call that you issued to us. Wanattabir rusula. And we will follow the messengers. Awalam hmm? takunu. So it will be said unto, so the reply will be given to them. Awalam takunu. Aksantum min kablu, malakum min muzawal. That did you not earlier swear that there would never be an end to you? That you would never end? That you would never end up on this day? So this is clear that what humanity will regret is they didn't heart follow the messengers. So ittibai rusul. And ittibai rusul sallallahu alayhi wa is what can save us from this regret on the day of judgment. And then moving forward a bit in the surah, moving, skipping, and then moving to verse 47. Uh, فَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ مُخْلِفَ وَعْدِهِ رُسُلَهُ Do not estimate or think that Allah Ta'ala will go against His promise that He has made to His messengers. So all the messengers have been promised the help of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَزِيزٌ ذُو انتقام. That indeed Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is Almighty and He is the being who possesses vengeance. And finally... Uh, the closing now of the surah in 48 to 51, Allah Ta'ala mentions the punishment that will be on that day. Yoma tu baddalul ardu, ghair al ard. On that day, the earth will be changed into other than the earth. Means we will be standing on some ground 
uh, on the Day of Judgment, but that will not be this earth, that will not be planet earth. Uh, and uh, that will be the day that the heavens as well, all the Samat will be changed into a different type of Samat. And it will, and all humanity will appear, or rather even all the earth and the Samat uh, will appear before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Wahid Al-Kahar The one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The Almighty Allah ta'ala The compelling Allah ta'ala Kahar is To whom in front of no one can resist the, He whose might and command is irresistible وَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ يَوْمَ إِذِنَ And then you will see on that day The mujrimin The wrongdoers Right? The wrongdoers The criminals That they will be مُقَرَّنِينَ فِي الْأَسْفَادِ They will be bound in chains. They will be bound together in chains like prisoners. سَرَابِيلُهُمْ مِنْ قَتِرَانِ And their garments, uh, their garments will be made of pitch tar. Pitch tar. وَتَغْشَوُ جُوهَهُمُ النَّارِ and the fire of Jahannam will totally envelop their faces, will be enshrouding their faces, will cover their faces. Allah Akbar Kabir Allah face. And so on that day, لِيَجْزِي اللَّهُ كُلَّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ On that day, Allah Ta'ala will give the due and recompense every self, every soul, مَا كَسَبَتْ Whatever it earned. Inna Allah Sariul Hisab indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swift in reckoning. And the last verse of Surah Ibrahim, verse fifty two, Hada Balahun Lin Nas. Indeed this is a balag, this is a proclamation for all of humanity. Falayum Dharu Bihi and uh, uh, they, so that they may be warned thereby. Walayatlamu and so that they may know Annama that indeed, huwa ilahu wahid, that he, Allah, he is the one God. Liyadhakkara ulul albab, and though the possessors of lub, and we discussed this, it came earlier, those of spiritual insight and sensitive understanding may be reminded and may take heed and may receive guidance and advice. Sadaqallahu al-Azim wa akhirul da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.